for you necessarily, but can the department remind us, we got some emails, some, some emails were sent out from the department. Can you remind us um, why this decision was made? It just like a refresher. Um, Madam Chairman Dodd, first of all, I, I want to um, um, uh, reflect on a, a decision has not been made. We issued some instructions and then withdrew those instructions. So just to clarify, no, no, uh, no change is being made to the That's current hilarious. landscape. But there was uh, an incident at where some information did go forth from the department and was later withdrawn. So I just want to clarify that point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is there, okay, maybe I'm confusing issues. Is there something that is coming from the federal government? Yes. So there is background to okay. this, this uh, discussion. The, the, so recent federal law changes tied to uh, the federal um, early childhood block grant um, uh, imposes uh, a restriction on both states and ultimately subgrantees of states that the reasons of conscience exemption around vaccinations no longer be recognized. And so that has created a federal um, environment uh, where states find themselves in the position of, in order to continue to be eligible to receive those federal funds, uh, they have to, um, they must make a choice, right? Must make a choice of either aligning to the federal requirements or not, uh, and, then, and then experiencing you know, either continued federal support or the termination of federal support. Um, and so uh, it was, uh, it was um, the department had come to uh, believe that the Department of Job and Family Services, which actually uh, stipulates some of these recommendations, had, uh, had been uh, making a, a determination that would affect the child care uh, providers in the state that receive publicly, uh, public funds from the Early Childhood Block Grant. And, um, and had had, uh, had made an initial uh, statement to those providers about this issue. It was since uh, that time uh, it became clear to us that in fact that change had not taken place at the state level, and so we withdrew those instructions. Thank you. Ms. Gowan. Thank you, Madam President. If I may ask a follow-up, and then I have a question for our guests, please. Yes. Is, Superintendent DeMaria, is it the Department of Education's intent to ask for a language change regarding this so that we would comply, or is that a point of ongoing discussion? Has it been determined at this point? Madam Chair, Ms. Fowler, uh, the authority actually rests with the Department of Job and Family Services. Uh, and so what our, our regulation of these kinds of providers is, is linked uh, to their regulations. We have some of our own operating regulations, uh, but right now that linkage and determination would rest with the Department of Job and Family Services. Thank you, and if I may, thank you, Madam President. Um, Ms. Daniels, thank you for being here. I was just wondering with your experience as a nurse and your children being in the preschool age, um, would there be any justifiable public health concerns that would um, in your estimation, override a parent's um, right of conscience that potentially putting their unvaccinated child in a preschool could endanger the public safety or, um, I don't want you to speak out of your professional context, but if you could share whether or not you feel that that would be a, a reason to potentially change the law or whether this would be a opening the door for a significant um, I don't believe that if I put my child who is unvaccinated in school that it would um, put the others that are vaccinated at risk if the vaccines truly work. Any other questions? If not, thank you very much.